Okay, hello everyone. Um, um, welcome to this video. Thank you very much for your comments and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And and the video today is dedicated to a practical session, a numerical example regarding uh, transient stability, power angle transient stability. Okay. What I will do today is a very basic example using equal area criterion. And the idea is to use the equal, uh, equal area criterion in order to uh, examine, to assess the, uh, uh, the transient power angle stability, okay? Um, this, uh, if you are following my videos, um, you must be able to watch the, the video related with the sample 4.1, okay? We are using the same machine as a consequence, uh, some data will come from the example 4.1, okay? I highly suggest that uh, you go and watch the video 4.1 before attempting this, this example, okay? Uh, well, here uh, you must recognize this is the same system that we have been using since the example 4.1. This is a 60 hertz uh, small system. We have a generator here. We know the inertia for, for uh, 8.45. We have a transmission, two transmission lines over here, a step up transformer, okay? There are some loading conditions. You must remember we are delivering here active power, 0 0.6 uh, per unit. And the power factor there is 0 0.8 lagging factor, okay? Uh, this low condition is when the voltage here at the, at the, when the voltage here at the, at the uh, infinitive bus is basically one per unit, okay? Okay, what is the job today? The job today is going for this question over here. Uh, consider that suddenly a three-phase, bolted three-phase short circuit is inserted at t equals zero seconds. And that is happening here at the middle, here at this transmission line, okay? We have a three-phase bolted short circuit over there. Uh, it looks simple, the question, but then we have determined if the system is stable that is the core question here. Can the system survive to this condition if the short circuit is sustained over there? And then um, uh, indicate uh, the final operating angle if the system is stable, okay? I need to tell you again, you don't need to solve 10,000 different examples. What you need to do is understand the physics here. For instance, in this case, is a bit different to any other book because in so many books they insert the short circuit then keep the short circuit then some angle is used to clear the short circuit opening the transmission line here not here we are trying to identify something that is quite interesting what's happen if we keep that short circuit for so long time i mean we don't remove the short circuit for and that is something that is quite, quite interesting, okay? What we will do now, what we will do now is the following. Let's start the solution, okay? Um, the, the previous condition was totally, uh, was totally analyzed using the, uh, the, the, the total uh, pre-fall condition was totally analyzed on the sample 4.1. I don't need to go across the uh, mm, pre-fall conditions. I will go, I will jump directly into the fall condition, okay? During a fault, we have a short circuit at the middle of the transmission line that is dividing, it's, it's exactly at the middle, okay? That means that those reactants over here, they are representing 50% of the transmission line two and 50% of the transmission line two, okay? That means this is this is the location for the sh short circuit, and this is the transmission line going to ground. Okay, I believe my students. Well, I know believe. I am sure my students. They are extremely good on circuit analysis, and they can identify that those reactants over here, they are in series, and that is the reason that we have this 
reactants over there, 0 0.40. Okay? And now what we will do is, okay, if we want to establish the power that is going from the internal voltage of the generator to the infinity push bar, we need to simplify this network. We need to simplify this network because you must remember the equation PG is equal okay okay that means that I need the impedance the reactance between those points and as you can see I have two shunt reactants going to ground in the middle that is a no-no. I need to simplify this network, okay? What is the first, the first step? Well, my students, they can realize that we have a beautiful star connection over there. Let me find my highlighting here. And you can see there is a beautiful, there is a beautiful star connection over here. The first step that I will do is converting that delta connection into a star connection, okay? You must remember those equations. I will not go there, but in this case, we are converting from here, from delta. This is a delta connection. You can see the delta, the beautiful delta connection. And then we are converting into a star connection and i think all of you can see the beautiful star connection over there you can see there is a star connection okay no problem after solving the star connection you will realize that there are two components in series here okay there are two elements in series 0 0.40 and 0 0.0375 okay next step well, I will solve here, I will solve here the series connection. I believe you can see over there that I solved the series connection. And then we have here a start connection, okay? Remember, I am doing all these things because I am interested in having a single reactance between G and the infinity push bar, okay? That is the reason that I am doing this. I believe for my students, they can see that there is another, here you have a beautiful star, yes, there is a star over there, and if you, if you, if you remember, you can convert that star connection into, into a delta connection again, you can do so, I mean, it's very simple for my students to do that, and now, what you need to use is use basic properties, circuit analysis properties, and there I transform this delta connection, and this is star connection, there is a star connection over there, and then I use the delta to star conversion, now I am moving delta to a star connection. And you can see here this beautiful, this beautiful star, okay? Oh, sorry, delta connection. Over here, there is clear uh, delta connection. And I will stop here the reduction. Why? Because I reached the level that I need. I need a single, I need a single reactance connecting those bus bar the internal voltage of the synchronous generator connected to, to the infinity push bar. There is a single reactance over there. I am done with my circuit reduction. And the next step is, it's clear for all my students, they are totally clear that this voltage here is the voltage coming from the internal generator. This one is the voltage coming from the Boost bar, and now we can use the proper equation. In this case, during the fault, during the fault, 
that is that is the beautiful power angle equation as you can see over here as you can see over here during default the maximum power transfer is reduced a lot if you remember the problem the sample 4.1 the uh, before default the maximum power transfer was equal to 2.62 and right now during the fault there there is a power transfer we can transfer power from the generator to the uh, uh, to the infinity push bar however what is the bad news that this power is very small okay what i will do now is okay now we have two conditions we have a condition that is coming from before the fault and then we have a condition that is coming from the fault, okay? And here you can see this is the maximum power that you can transfer previous to the fault, 2.62. And then when we have the fault, the power that you can transfer is reduced, okay? Now the question here is, okay, can this system uh, absorb this fault uh, in a steady state? You must remember we are here previous to the fault then we have the short circuit then if this is a stable the system will do this and that is the maximum oscillation and this will be the final state state point okay what we want to know is if this delta mats if this delta mats is allowing the system to keep stability and to keep stability in this system the area one should be equal to the area two and the area one and the area two it's basically basic mathematic we can go for the basic mathematic here and it's very very simple okay the area one is defined like mechanical power minus electrical power and in this case, in this case, the angle delta zero and the angle delta one, they are already known, okay? Delta zero is the original, uh, the original operating point, and that is equivalent, that is equivalent to uh, um, 13 degrees, okay? And delta and delta uh, one is already a uh, angle that we know because, uh, if the system is stable, the uh, mechanical power will be 0 0.6, but this will be the um, power angle equation using, using 0 0.96, uh, 95 as maximum power, okay? And from there, we obtain that the power angle is 40 degrees, okay? Well, what we need to do now, what we need to do now is basically we put the number together for this. This is a number coming from the area one. The area two is the deaccelerating area. And here, here, what we are trying to get, what we need to investigate is this delta maximum, okay? This is the number that I want to know. When I solve the equation, I have a cosine here, and also I have over there, I have over there, the uh, cosine of the angle okay when we apply the equal area criteria area area one must be equal to area two and we reach this non-linear this non-linear equation okay when we arrive to the non-linear equation right now the problem is using some mathematic methods okay if you want to use any mathematic method coming from uh, MATLAB or if you have uh, any favorite uh, mathematical technique for solving nonlinear equations, feel free to use it, okay? <coughs> okay, what is interesting here, what is interesting here is that we get three solutions, okay? If you are interested in mathematics, you must remember that you can use uh, just plotting the function, I mean plotting this function, you can find the intersection with the axis zero, and you will find that there is one solution here, one solution there, and one solution over there. 
there are three values of delta that make zero that equation. The first one is 13 degrees. That is a no-no. That is not a possible solution because that is the original, that is the uh, starting point of everything. That is the uh, delta uh, zero, that is the angle before the, uh, the, the disturbance, okay? For that reason, this is a no-no. The third one, the third one, if you look over here, it's located over there, is around 186 degree. Okay, mathematically is a number that is making zero this equation. But from the from the power system analysis point of view, this is not a possible solution. What is the reason? Because in this case, this number is larger than 180, that is a no-no, okay? And then we examine the second solution here. And what is the good news? That 72 degrees, 72 degree is the proper solution for this problem. Why? Because 72 will define the maximum oscillation that we can have here in this system. What I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is Okay, we start from 13, okay? This angle here is uh, 40, and the maximum oscillation will be 70, 72 degrees, okay? And this is something extremely important and extremely helpful, okay? Now it's time for the conclusion. What are the conclusion? The conclusion is that this system is quite interesting. Because this system is able to, if you put a short circuit in the middle of the transmission line number two, this system will be able to keep working, to keep working with that short circuit. Probably you are wondering, what? Yes, yes, it's true. If, if you use the equal area criteria, this system is able to, um, of course, to have in a short circuit, and in this case, the, uh, the critical credit time will be infinitive, uh, infinite because this short circuit can stay over there forever and the system will be stable, okay? However, in real life, that is not a situation because in real life, okay, from the active power point of view, the system will be stable, from the angle point of view will be stable, but over there, what you will have is a problem about the local voltage at the phone will be zero and you will have a massive consumption of reactive power, okay? Again, the conclusion here is that this system is stable. This system is, is able to reach an stable operating point even if the short circuit is not clear, okay? Even if the fault stay over there forever. But the problem is, the problem is that in real life there are many things okay going over there and the maximum oscillation point will be 72 degrees and the final equilibrium point will be 40 degrees okay well thank you everyone thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoy and you find this useful thank you very much